Dogs are easily one of the most diverse species on Earth. Geneticists tell us it's likely that each of them descended from one animal, the wolf. These breeds look very different from each other, but they all share much of their DNA with those early wolves, and that's what makes them dogs. Now let's move inside the cell and see how this works. DNA is found in the nucleus of the cell. It consists of a long chain of chemicals designated by the letters A, G, C, and T. Some sections of DNA are called genes. They contain the specific instructions for making the proteins that form the cells that give the dog its traits. In our last episode, we saw that DNA in brown bears had mutated to form polar bears. Well, how does that work? A mutation in a gene occurs when there's a change in its sequence. Often this results in breaking one of the instructions for forming the animal. In this case, the mutation was in the specific gene that determines fur color. The disabled gene is unable to give instructions to make colored fur, so the mutant fur is white. The change in bears occurred long ago. Wouldn't it be great if we could observe mutation today, in real time? Well, we're in luck. Critical work has been done in the laboratory of Richard Lenski, who worked with a species of bacteria called E. coli. The Lenski lab has been growing generations of E. coli in flasks for 30 years. In the early 1990s, they saw that the descendant bacteria began to grow faster than their ancestors. That was great news for the happy E. coli, but why was this happening? A decade later, they were able to determine the mutation that caused it. What they found was that a certain gene in the E. coli had been destroyed. Losing that gene ended up helping the bugs grow faster. Then they looked at a dozen other helpful mutant genes in the E. coli and saw that they too had been broken. Mutations had left the genes either crippled or completely disabled. But that seems odd. How can breaking a gene help the organism? Imagine you have to drive to a destination on one tank of gas or you'll die. Given the weight of your car, you'll never reach your destination on just one tank. So you toss out the hood, a seat, floor mats, and a cigarette lighter. The lighter, degraded car gets you to your destination, and you survive. So breaking genes can help E. coli adapt to a lab environment and broken genes helped a polar bear adapt to the Arctic. How about our dog friends? <laughs> In just the past 20 years, scientists have actually discovered many mutations responsible for traits of breeds. And again, the mutations don't construct new genes. Most of them break or damage pre-existing genes. For example, Increased muscle mass in some breeds derives from degradation of a myostatin gene. We also know what mutations caused a yellow coat. Short tails. Even the lovable friendliness of dogs towards humans compared to less friendly wolves. So a dog can be changed by breaking genes, but it comes at a high cost. The broken genes very likely will never return to their original working state. The dachshund with short leg genes won't be returning to anything resembling a Labrador. And we won't see the polar bear mutate back to its old self eating berries. In short, 
helpful mutations are not a DNA upgrade. Getting a newer smartphone is an upgrade. It's more helpful because it has completely new features. But mutations don't install new features in DNA. They only make changes to existing ones. A mutation is more like disabling your GPS. It may help to save your battery, but it doesn't add a new function. We're told that random mutation is the main driver for evolutionary change and that evolution is responsible for lower forms being upgraded to higher ones. Yet the latest scientific results show new species are made by breaking genes, by devolution, not evolution. Is there another piece of the puzzle that we're missing? Is there some unknown some X factor that boosts the capacity of evolution to gradually generate higher and higher life forms? I'll let you think about that for a bit, and I'll see you next time when we discover the X factor. <laughs>